yet. Hello again guys, welcome to another episode. Today we are going to be talking about one of my favourite childhood films, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, because this week we lost the incomparable Gene Wilder, and I think it's time to pay a fitting tribute to the man that formed a little bit of my childhood. Hold your breath. Make a wish. Count to three. Come with me and you'll be in a world of pure imagination. First of all, one of the biggest things to consider in the film of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory is that the factory itself is a death trap. Of course, people who have actually seen the 1971 film would know that almost no kids survive. Almost none. And I'm sorry, but the statute of limitations on spoiler alerts has passed, so none of this Oh my god, spoil Charlie and the Chocolate Factory! You're an inhuman monster! I said good day! And on to the next thing. Let's talk about all the awesome shit within the factory itself and some of the fun facts about it. When you actually see the factory doors open for the first time and you get to look inside the factory, this mythical factory that we've been hearing about for the whole start of the film, you end up seeing, like the kids themselves, for the first time, this amazing, wondrous land. What you realise is that there's this childhood wonder that is in reality and is joining the story through Charlie and his grandpa as you go through this factory and the, after they win the golden ticket and everything, going through that whole process, you're suddenly filled with that wonder yourself because you don't know what to expect. Right off the bat, when Wonka falls over and then he kind of stands back upright and it turns out he's fine, he comes out that limping out and then he rolls over and he turns out to be fine and everything. I mean, we don't really know what to expect at that point. We're put on kilter. And then when you finally get through that whole crazy sequence before you finally get into the actual room, the actual genuine look on the kids' faces and in and, and all the adults' faces actually when they first enter that area is actually genuine. They had not seen the set at all until that very moment. So if you go back and actually have a look at that clip, you'll see the looks on their faces totally 100% legit. Clever. One of my favorite sequences I think that we can all have following on from that candy room they first come into is the chocolate river where we actually get our first casualty of Augustus Gloop. Augustus sweetheart save some room for later. Oh uh, Augustus please don't do that my chocolate must never be touched by human hands. I can't hate my boy Augustus man because if I get given a river of chocolate you bet your ass I'm jumping in and I have chocolate. I mean you ain't gonna say you're gonna do any better. You gotta be jumping in on that river. My biggest thing was the boy didn't swim. I mean, he's in a fucking three-piece suit. He's looking fly as shit. Goes right into the drink. Can't pull himself out. It's a real damn shame. But on the upside and everything like that, I learned how a bullet shot out of a gun. See, you will, Charlie. Watch. Remember you once asked me how a bullet comes out of a gun? And while on the topic of other consumables and everything like that, I would actually love to talk about the fizzy lifting drink scene. As terrifying as that was, them floating up towards the blades, and they're gonna die, and the music rises, and everyone's terrified, it's like, oh my god, they're gonna be cut to ribbons, it's gonna be horrible. And then they managed to start burping and coming back down for the longest time. I literally thought that was actually how things would work. You know, if you want to feel better, you gotta burp, otherwise you'll <laughs> rise too high and you'll be cut to ribbons. I was a dumb kid. With all those fears and everything aside, you put that fizzy lifting drink in front of me today and I'm absolutely going to be consuming the shit out of it. I don't care how upset Wonka gets. For a film about a fictional candy company that didn't ever exist, and the boy who won the golden ticket to explore it with a bunch of naughty children, it absolutely was amazing to see such a film made in its time. In fact, fun fact, the candy man that actually exists in the shop at the start of the film that thinks the candy man can... A man by the name of Sammy Davis Jr. actually threw his hand up at one point. Quite an old person for some of you young people watching. But he was actually known by a stage name of the candy man. Who can take a sunrise? Sprinkle it with you. Thank you. Cover it with chocolate or a miracle or two. The candy man. The candy man can. <laughs> and the reason I bring it up is because with films these days, Absolutely, they would take a big name actor and slide him into a small slot. But the main reason they said that Sammy Davis couldn't play the part wasn't only just because it might be a bit on the nose, but also because a big name actor and performer and entertainer like Sammy Davis would actually take apart from the realism. This is back in a time when films actually considered the fact that 
It didn't really matter about the box office draw that much. What mattered was making a great film. Bull. No, roast beef, but I haven't got it quite right yet. Let's talk about Gene Wilder himself, the man that actually made this movie what it was. Probably more than you actually know. In fact, according to my research, there's been a few elements about Willy Wonka that I feel should actually be truly shared. Stop. Don't. Number one, Gene Wilder did not agree to actually do the film unless he was allowed to do the limp and the somersault at the start of the film. When the director asked him, hey, are you, are you really not going to do the film? Uh, like... Serious? If, if, if I don't let you do a limp and a somersault? Gene Wilder replied, Yeah. And the directors had to bloody cave. One of the other elements that Gene Wilder managed to insist upon was that his pants be tan and his hat be shorter. Now this might not actually mean a lot to a lot of people, but as a visual sort of standpoint, this actually means a lot. Because on one hand, you would have had Willy Wonka with green pants and a taller hat. And instead, you got a shorter hat and tan pants, which grounded Willy Wonka in a much more real sense. He was less wacky in his visual appearance. Despite as wacky as he was, he wasn't over the top. An overly large top hat would have been insane. And speaking of insanity, let's look at the last scene where he loses his shit. It's all there, black and white, clear as crystal. You stole fizzy lifting drinks. You bumped into the ceiling, which now has to be washed and sterilized, so you get nothing. You lose! Good day, sir! Once again, the actors responding to Gene Wilder's performance in this scene are genuine in their emotion. They had no idea that he was going to lose it so greatly, so that when you actually see the looks on their faces, the terrified and confused reactions that they have, it's all coming from an extremely genuine place. But as they say in acting, acting is reacting, and you can't react without a good act come from, and Gene Wilder puts on an amazing performance in this film, and if you are not aware of Gene Wilder's work, there is a tremendous library to look into, but if you're only getting a chance to look at one thing, I would highly suggest checking out Charlie and the Chocolate Factory for a sheer range of emotion, and the sheer vastness of performance that Gene Wilder can do. Try some more. The strawberries taste like strawberries. The snozberries taste like snozberries. And of course, if you do have the time to check out the rest of Gene Wilder's work, don't forget to actually check out Young Frankenstein, Blazing Saddles, See No Evil, Hear No Evil, and if you get even more time than that, please check out The Frisco Kid. It's, it's fucking amazing. I'm a bank robber. You are a rabbi. I'm not a rabbi. But in summary, guys, Gene Wilder was an amazing actor and a performer who had an impact in our culture and in our life, who despite leaving acting a long time ago, continued to have a family and a real life. He brought forth characters that made us laugh and bring us joy and gave us an escape from our weary and dreary lives. And for that, we have to thank him and wish him well.